Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be working with flip fluids in Blender. This is actually going to be the scene that we're going to be making. It's a pretty basic scene but we're going to be kind of working with these particles here and changing the colors of them and all that good stuff. Also changing the size of them to give them kind of that cool effect. Alright, let's go and jump into it. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and delete the starting cube. Normally I would use it as my domain but I'm not going to do that today. Let me go ahead and reset my 3D cursor. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in my plane. I'm going to scale it up by 8 and then I'm going to scale it on the X by 2. And that looks pretty good. This is actually a really simple scene to set up. I'm going to go ahead and bring in my starting or my uh, inflow object which will be a cube and we're going to scale it down to about there. I'm going to go ahead and scale it on the Y by, let's do, let's do 10. All right. Not too bad. I'm going to press 1 on the numpad here to get a little bit of a better view of where it's at. Okay. And we're going to come to our physics tab here. We're going to click flip fluids. And we're going to click inflow. And inflow is basically a nonstop flowing of fluid. If you've done any fluid work before, then you probably already know that. We're going to change the initial velocity of this, so it's going to come out of the x-axis. If you did negative, it would go the opposite way. We're going to put it about 1. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want the majority of the water to be going forward. Now we're going to go ahead and add a couple of toruses. We're actually just going to add 1, and we're going to rotate it on the y by pressing R, Y, 90. And I actually did that with the same object here. If you happen to do it all in one, you can just press P while it's highlighted, and you're going to separate it by selection. And you're going to hit Tab. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to come down to uh, Obstacle. I'm going to change it to Obstacle. And we're going to change the white water influence to about a 1.5. We'll do it. And then we're just going to go ahead and duplicate that. You get a lot of problems when you add an object inside of another object that you're in edit mode. So I have to go ahead and reset the origin. Actually, you don't have to with this type of scene, but when you work with anything else in Blender, when you do modeling and whatnot, you want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that by hitting Shift D. I'm going to select all these. I'm going to duplicate them here, and we're going to actually scale them up a little bit. Let's move this one in. And feel free to set this up any way you want. You don't even have to use toruses if you don't want to. I personally just liked them. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate these objects. And we're going to scale them down by about half. See, let's go ahead and scale it down a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and duplicate them again. And again, and this scene isn't exactly the same because I don't recall how I made that one. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change some of the influence of the white water here. I'm going to crank these up a little bit higher. Just to give a little bit of, of difference and variation. The white water is a lot of fun to play with. And it really creates a lot of cool effects, especially when you start to add emission shaders and glass shaders to them to the collision objects or actually even just the particles themselves. And that's all that's all it really is. The white waters the white water simulation with foot fluids is really just a particle system built in. If you've tried to do blender particles, you, you could see a similar result, but flip fluid makes it so tremendously easier. I'm actually going to make this a obstacle it doesn't really need to be because the bottom of the domain is going to line up right with the plane. But with that, you can give it a little bit of friction so it doesn't flow quite as fast. I'm going to probably put that at about 0.6 and give it just a hair more influence, uh, particle influence, or white water. Now we're going to go ahead and add our domain. And we're just going to scale this cube up to about there, and then we're going to scale it on the X until it fits in the seam. Right about there, that should do it. And then go to Flip Fluids, click Flip Fluids, and click Domain. We're going to go ahead and set our resolution to about 225, 
and our preview to about one, we'll do 125. We're going to come down here, we're going to click on white water, and we're going to hit simulation. And then we're going to go ahead and bake it. And while it's baking, we're going to set up everything else on the scene here. So come up here and click Cycles Renderer, and then Shift Z to bring it into rendered view. And we're going to go ahead and set up our scene a little bit here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to change the lamp to a sun lamp just to bring in some more light. I'm going to click on the World tab to give us some world lighting. I'm not actually going to add any other lights in. Let's go ahead and turn that off for great visibility. I might, I might actually add a couple area lights. I'm not sure. But I actually really, really like to add lights to the particles. It gives it kind of a cool effect. Okay, so once you have a few frames baked for the simulation, go ahead and press 1 on your numpad. And we're going to go ahead and raise up the plane and the domain. So press G and Z because you notice that there is a little bit of water space here. I apologize, not the domain, just the plane. So press G and Z on the plane only. And we're going to go ahead and just move it up a little bit. I don't know why the simulation does that, but it kind of creates a gap in between the domain and the actual simulation. I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift Z again. I'm going to go back to our rendered view. And then we're going to come up to our actual domain, which is down here at the bottom, cube uh, 14. We're going to click on fluids, fluid surface. We're going to go ahead and give that a material. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. I'll probably just give it a nice glass shader. If you have all these little white dots and you want to get rid of them, which you should, come down to sampling, change this to one and this to one. If you're using EV, the settings are a little bit weird, but it won't say sampling, I don't think. I cannot recall what it says. But anyway, when you find it, it will say clamp and direct. I'll probably drop a, a quick notation right here that says where the settings are in EV. All right, back to the material. Uh, let's change the ORI to 1.334. And I'm not sure that I'm really enjoying that color. And this is where you guys can get creative. You guys can kind of set it up and, and set it in any way you want. That's a nice color. I actually like that. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and go to change it to principal uh, BSDF. I'm going to change the transmission to 100. I know, I just totally changed everything around right now. And change the ORI. That's actually already set. We're going to change this to a light blue. We're going to change our subsurface. This kind of just mixes some colors together. The way they interact with other objects, you get that uh, subsurface to show up a little bit more. <clears throat> now, if you click on your domain right here and go down to your physics tabs, your physics tab, you can scroll all the way down to where it says, somewhere it should say white water. I think I missed it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, display settings, that's where it's at. And right here, if you click rendered only, you notice how it's checked. Basically what that means is that <clears throat> it's only going to show up in the final render. You're not going to be able to see it in the viewport. So all of your white water effects, you can't currently see right now. If you were to uncheck all of them and then go one frame, you'd be able to see them. But what we're going to do is we're going to hide all of them but just one at a time because you could really really overload your system by having all of the particle systems on screen. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to do the spray. <clears throat> so click here and then under here is your spray so that's where we know it's at. I'm actually going to change the size of the spray down to about 0.02 I like a smaller one. It's just a cooler effect. In fact, I'm going to do that for all of these. 0.02. Okay. Now when we change the frame, we should be able to just see... There it is. Just see our spray. So I'm not going to do anything too crazy with that. I'm just going to go ahead and put a new material on it. Actually, let me click on it and do it that way. New material. And I'm just going to do a basic white emissions. And judging by that size, I actually think it's still too big. So I'm going to come back here and we're going to change the spray down to 0 0.01. And see what that looks like. 
Yeah, that's better. Actually, let's make it a little bit finer. Let's do point zero zero five. Each time you do a change, you have to change the frame. Yeah, that looks really good. And if you were to add the fluid back in, you can kind of see the effect that it's creating here. And that's why I don't add a lot of lights to my water scenes, because you get it naturally through these white water particle systems. I like to add a lot of emission lights. Okay, so for the foam, we're going to go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to... Oh, it actually showed up. Perfect. And the foam is also very big. So let's change the size of the spray foam here. Oh, I already did that. I'm sorry. Just the foam. Let's do point zero eight. Ah, there we go. Perfect. And for this one, I'm gonna add. A, I'm gonna also gonna add an emission shader, and we're gonna make it kind of a bright, fun color. So let's add. You can do a little bit realistic. You can get kind of a green color in there. I guess that wouldn't look very realistic. A nice neon green. Actually, that looks pretty cool. Let's leave it. And then the last one we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on our bubble here. Need to change the frame again. And that is actually quite harder to see. Oh, there it is. Those are big, but they're bubbles. So I, I kind of like to keep them relatively close to the size that they are. But for the bubbles, I'm actually just going to go ahead and do a nice glass shader. And that actually looks about perfect. I don't even want to change the ORI. So now we're going to take a quick look at what everything looks like. Yeah, I don't like that green. So let's change the green. What was the foam was green? Let's change that to maybe just a little, a little green. Yeah, that's cool. And this is kind of the, the, the thing that you could really do is you could really play around with a lot of the color mixture here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and change the spray, and we're going to do a complementary yellowish color. So let's do a real dark yellow. Perfect. All right. Now... <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change some of these Taurus's uh, materials. Nothing fancy. Just going to click some random ones and add a material onto it. And for these, I'm going to go ahead and add glass. Let's go ahead and click that. Let's uncheck all of these particle systems here. Now, if you select multiple objects and, and you pick a new material and you realize that only one has it, you need to come down here to the arrow and click copy materials to others. And there you go. And let's make that, let's make it a nice purple color. And I'm gonna go back to a regular view. And if you're not sure which ones you've done, these ones that are a lighter shade have material on them. So that way you know which ones you've already materialized. And this, I'm gonna go ahead and add emissions. Click my arrow and apply it to all the other ones. It's going to do me. It's amazing how sometimes emission shaders look amazing and then sometimes they look like just garbage. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Okay, and the last three we have, let's go ahead and add we try glossy. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to have to up the roughness a little bit, though. Apply the material to all others. That's actually a cool little effect. Cool, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and click all of my Tauruses. I think I can do this, and we're going to just... I'm going to hit Control 3, and that's going to add a Subsurf Level 3 onto it. There we go, and that's pretty much how you set up this scene. I'm going to scrub through and check some of the other frames. Yeah, perfect.
Now when it comes to rendering, let's go ahead and put that on GPU. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and crank this up. You choose your directory that you want to save it in, and then the file that you want to save. I traditionally save as a PNG for every frame. As far as your samples go, the render at 128 is fine. If it's taken a long time, you could actually, with most water simulations, unless you have a lot of really complex materials on your uh, models, you can get away with doing as little as 90, and it's very indistinguishable. So if we were to go ahead and render this out, which I will render while I continue to jabber on, we can see what it looks like, and hopefully it'll be done by the time I get done. So if you guys like this video, please take the time to like it. And if you haven't subscribed and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. In the next tutorial that I'm planning on doing, I'm actually going to do the attempt at making waves. Waves is one of these things that tends to be very hard on getting it right. If you get it right once, it doesn't mean you're going to get it right again the second time. I have played around with it many times. I did also notice that I did not set up my camera, but I'm sure you guys know how to do that already. Hopefully. In case you don't, I know I'm trying to end the tutorial and I'm still going on. You think I was like, uh, didn't plan any of this out. If you hit zero on your numpad and hit shift F, you can use it, you can use the uh, AS WD keys to move around left and right up and down or back and forth and then the Q button or Q key will take you down and the E key will take you up and if you hit shift you go faster. Alright other than that we'll see you in the next one.